I was hopelessly without purpose because I chose to proclaim my own relevancy over his omnipotency. See, while I was still a sinner, he shed all of his dignity. Divinity within the Trinity squandered for me. This pain was of my height, not his, my flesh. It's but a sackcloth mesh in which I was told to confide in this high that we call earth. Truly, I cannot always rely on my own desires, but I've exalted them to be my Messiah. See, these gods always make promises to us, but they always lie to us. See, they're as inadequate as the expanse of the sea that separates you and me, the expanse of perception. See, the key cannot be found in these messiahs that we dream it can. We result to idolatry and adultery, literally and metaphorically, because we choose to ignore the gift of divine generosity. God's grace is still within you, within me. We seek pleasure in anything, we overestimate everything. When our good God gives good gifts, we generally tend to twist the truth. We take the list of good gifts that God imparts and make general gods out of them, declaring that God is merely aloof. Though we have proof that he stoops to an adequacy, do you choose to see? Cry will cry, and is crying right now over Ford about you and me. Yet we cry out all the day long, nagging, saying, I have become a laughing stock of the mockery. God, do you not see me? We cry out to God, nagging, me, me, me. He, she, it is inadequate to satisfy who? Me. And we then attempt to flee from God's righteous, pious wrath, and we fully deserve due to our iniquity. Did indeed create our faith, but to this day we have not accepted it. To throwing ourselves again into the pit of despair that we consummate. God truly loves unconditionally, He will bestow upon us suffering or life, just as a parent is thought to do for their child. It is our choice. Yet the beauty is that He has perfected the choices of our impurities so that they might provide integrity. See, this is ultimate, the epitome. Yes, he's perpetual being. Because what is an act is a fact. Well, fact has no impact. It makes us view God's justice through people. If we sing, praise God for whom all blessings flow, and this is indeed what we claim to do and know. Why does it not show? If I do any of this without conviction, my faith is but a hope of fiction, and I have no purpose in diction. The faith that I held so dear becomes but an impending fear. See, suffering is the greatest gift God has bestowed for all that we own, our homes, our friends, our family, and our cherished phones will perish. If God asked you to suffer for the cause of the cross, would you be cross? Faith is not a leap into apparent nothingness, yet we are restless. For surely I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. It is quoted often, but it is caught in our hearts of stone. We tell God to leave us alone and then complain when he does so. He gave us what we wanted, but verse 12 makes all the difference. For it says, then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. See, by the modern church's hand, we interpret God's reassurance as deliverance. Yet the great good for it has attempted to deliver hence. Jesus came not for fame, but rather he suffered my pain. The beauty is that I will never know how. How Jesus, the key to the poor, opened my door, placed himself upon the thrashing floor, and bore my chaff, the punishment for my golden calf. To each his own, let it be known that we, Israel, of then, now, and to come, will stop tolling our tongues, lay down our drums, so that he may.